Okay, we're on to our next section here in Earth Science, which is the rock cycle. So we're moving on from the view of the Earth as a whole, and we're now moving to the rock cycle. So we're going to look at the individual rocks and rock types within the Earth um, and also on the surface of the Earth. So what exactly is a rock? Well, a rock's a mass of mineral or mineral-like matter that occurs naturally. The two key words are nat occurs naturally because there are a lot of rocks out there that are made by man. Um, so we take naturally made rocks and we combine them with other rocks to make man-made rocks. But a rock that we talk about in this class is one that is um, made naturally. So it has to come from nature. And they're all different shapes, all different sizes, and all different colors, but they must come from nature in order to be considered the rocks that we will study in this class. Okay, all rocks are made from what's called the rock cycle. And the rock cycle is basically driven by heat. And the heat comes from two places, either inside the earth, uh, mostly in the form of uh, magma, or from the sun. And the sun not only heats the rocks on the surface of the earth, but the sun's heat also causes weather, which um, allows rocks to be weathered and formed into new rocks. Um, it's a continuous process. It never stops. The rocks are always changing. Um, this has gone on for millions of years before humans were here on Earth, and it will continue to go um, after we leave the Earth as well. Uh, three things cause rocks to change, and that's water, air, and land. Um, as you can see from the diagram here, um, the water being the weathering. Um, weathering, as we learned from the last um, section, is, is a destructive force that breaks down rock. Um, air breaks down rock as well, and land actually can change rock um, as well through weathering. Uh, through uh, earthquakes and um, things like that. So water, air, and land um, cause rocks to change. Sometimes it cause, they cause rocks to form new rocks. They also cause rocks at times to break down as well. So the rock cycle is a continuous process which causes rocks to change and is always going on. Three types of rocks. This should be basically just a review. Um, you've probably heard of these rock types before, but the first one is igneous, second one is sedimentary, and the third one is metamorphic. Igneous rock is one that comes from lava or magma, um, so some type of fire, some type of heat. A sedimentary rock is one, as you can tell from this rock here, it's one that's made of, of all different pieces of little rock um, that come together to create a larger rock, so they're made of, of uh, individual little pieces of rock. And finally, a metamorphic rock um, is a rock that is uh, made from not only heat, but also pressure deep within the earth. So three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. First one, igneous rock, simply put, is a rock formed by heat. And that's either magma, which is inside the earth, or lava, which you can see here that's coming out of a volcano. Um, basically, the igneous rocks form one of two ways. They're either slow-forming rocks, uh, which allow the, the <coughs> gas and heat to escape. And that, that would be the rock here in the upper right-hand corner. That rock, you can tell, has holes in it, or it's also called porous because that's allowed the heat to escape. Uh, the other type of igneous rock is one that cools very quickly, like this piece of obsidian here. This uh, rock, as you can see, has no pores in it, uh, very um, sharp edges. Uh, it's a very weighty rock, um, and it's very shiny as well because of how it cooled. It cooled very quickly. The one on top cooled very slowly, so it has the pores in it. The one on the bottom right-hand corner uh, cooled very quickly as it came out of the volcano, and that's why those two rocks, although... Um, they are both igneous rocks, they actually look different. Second type of rock is called a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock comes from smaller pieces of rock which are called sediments. That's how you get the name sedimentary rock. Um, looking closely at a sedimentary rock, you look down here in the right hand corner, you can see this rock is made of many different types of rocks, um, different colors, kind of give that away. Sediments usually come to an area, um, as you can see this is a picture in the lower left hand corner of a, a river basin that is flowing into the ocean and it's carrying all the little pieces of rock, the sediment, and dumping them into the ocean. And as that dries over time, it creates layers. As you can see in the upper right hand corner here, uh, the different colors of rock um, show the different types of rock because they're, they're laid down um, and smashed together to create layers. So, so sedimentary rocks are just rocks that are made from smaller rocks um, that are kind of cemented or compacted together to create larger pieces of rock. Third type of rock is very similar to an igneous rock, um, and it's called a metamorphic rock. The only difference being a metamorphic rock is one that's actually formed with not only heat, but also pressure. Igneous rock is only formed from heat. It usually comes to the surface of the earth, um, and it cools there. 
A metamorphic rock is one that's actually formed underneath um, the land, deep down um, into the crust, and it's formed with not only heat, but also pressure. So all that weight of the land above, it's kind of squeezing that rock together and creating that rock. So you have not only heat, but also pressure. This rock here is actually a sedimentary rock, um, or was a sedimentary rock in the past, but metamorphism fism occurred, and that showed the bending here of those layers. So before we saw a sedimentary rock that had very straight layers, but you can see this rock has layers that are bent, and that's caused by the pressure. So this rock is put under a lot of pressure. It's kind of squeezed together, which causes the particles to um, be compacted uh, together, which causes this bending in the rock's layers. So a lot of times when you see a rock and it has layers like this that are curved or bent, not in a straight line, that's a dead giveaway for a metamorphic rock. So what is it? Uh, magma or lava? A lot of people wonder uh, what's the difference between those two things. Well, they're the same thing, really, except magma is when lava is below the surface. So it's melted rock that's below the surface. Lava, on the other hand, is melted rock that um, actually reaches the surface, whether that be a by a volcano or some type of crack in the, in the Earth's surface, so that magma is allowed to escape and finally reach the surface. So they're the exact same thing. Uh, magma and lava, except magma is below the earth. So you can see from this diagram, the magma chamber is below the earth. And once it erupts out of a volcano, um, it then becomes termed lava. So the same rock, just is based on location. One's below the earth, the surface of the earth. The other one is above the surface of the earth. So still igneous rocks, just different locations. Weathering we talked about a little bit in our last section. Um, it is a destructive force. It's basically when a rock is broken down, and weathering can occur in a lot of different ways. Um, it can occur by water, as you can see in the lower left-hand corner here, this picture. This is a river that actually goes around here in the background and comes back. And over time, as you can see, it has, it has broken down this rock, and that's why the river is a lot lower than it used to be. Um, it has weathered that rock away and taken it actually out to the ocean. Another way is air. This is a picture in the lower right-hand corner of a rock that's in the desert. And you can tell it has very smooth surfaces and has kind of created like a cone shape. And that's because the um, air has air and the wind have blown and over time have broken down that rock. Um, also, living things can weather rock. I know weathering, you would think that it's uh, only nature, but um, weathering can also occur from humans and plants and other things. So as you can see from the picture in the upper right-hand corner, this tree has actually weathered this rock or split it in half. And on the bottom, humans have um, taken their bikes or sometimes we walk on trails through the wilderness. And that trail is an example of weathering um, that is caused by humans. So weathering is just when you take a, a rock and you break it down into smaller pieces. So what are sediments? Sediments, simply put, are simply weathered pieces of earth material. So they're basically you take a, a larger rock and you break it down to create sediment. And sediments can be moved um, several ways. They can be moved by water, as you can see below. Again, this is a river that carries all this darker sediment and dumps it into the ocean. You can kind of see this line where the lighter sediment is being dumped into the ocean, so it's being traveled or is, is traveling by water. Gravity can also move sediments. As you can see, there used to be a house that sat here on the side of this cliff. And as the sediments move, because gravity pulled them down, also move the house down. Glaciers will also move um, sediments in the middle of these two mountains. This is what's called a glacier. This is basically frozen ice that's slowly moving down um, the mountain. And as you can see, it's not white, pure ice like you would you would get in your refrigerator. It's actually dirt and rock in it. And that is an example of uh, sediments moving by glacier. And finally, in drier areas such as desert climates here in the middle, you can see this picture is kind of cloudy and the air is air seems kind of dusty and that's just small pieces of sediment that are being moved um, by the wind. So sediments are just smaller pieces of bigger rocks and they can be moved several ways including water, gravity, glaciers, or the wind. Streak and a rock will be doing uh, a couple labs here coming up so you need to know what a streak is and it's basically when you use a rock like a colored pencil or a piece of chalk or maybe even like a crayon. You're basically when you draw with it. Um, streak is the color mineral makes on what's called a scratch plate. 
Um, like I said, we'll do this in the lab here pretty soon. It's basically like you're coloring with the rock. You just take it and you draw it across in what's called a stroke. And as you color with that stroke, it creates what's called a streak. And what's weird about streak is, even though you may think a rock is a certain color, sometimes the streak color is actually different than the rock color itself. As you can see here, you got a darker rock and a rock that's goldish color. Um, and the darker rock actually has a streak that's gold, and the gold rock has a streak that's kind of a grayish black. So don't be fooled by the color of the rock. The streak might not necessarily be the same color. Um, it could actually be quite different. Another aspect of rocks we'll study is called cleavage, and that's the ability of a rock to break in a straight line. Um, if you ever have been to a lake or a pond and you've skipped rocks, these are the really good skipping rocks because they're basically flat. Um, as you can see, these rocks have very sharp edges. Um, they're not very smooth. Um, and, it, and that's caused by the rock's cleavage and allows the rock to break basically on a straight line. Now, obviously, these rocks aren't totally straight, but you can see the definite sharp edges. And that's what uh, determines cleavage. So it's just the ability of a rock to break along a straight surface. Fracture, on the other hand, is different. It's still breakage within a rock, but it's when a rock breaks um, in a non-flat surface. Whenever you fracture a bone, this is an x-ray of a picture of a bone here in the upper right-hand corner, most of the time you hear of people fracturing a bone. And that's because it's not necessarily a flat surface. As you can see, this fracture here is not straight. It's kind of a curve. Um, it doesn't line up exactly right. Same thing with a rock. Down here is an example of a rock um, that has broken with fracture. Uh, and you can see it's almost curvy. It almost looks like a liquid. And that's what fracture is when a rock doesn't necessarily break in a straight line. It kind of breaks in a curvy or sometimes unpredictable fashion. So very similar to cleavage, um, except it's not in a straight line. There is, it could be curves. Um, it could be fairly straight, but a lot of times there'll be some type of breakage um, that occurs that's not exactly in a straight line. You don't have very sharp surfaces like you do with cleavage. Another aspect we will study with rocks is a rock's crystal. Um, you've probably heard of crystals before. Uh, crystals are colorless most of the time, and, and when I say colorless, some of them do have colors. As you can see here on the right side, this one has a purple color. But when they say colorless, that means it's not uh, the same color all the way through. It's what's called transparent, meaning you can see through the rock. Now, you might not necessarily be able to see through the rock with your eyes, but basically what they mean is um, you can see light through the mineral. So if a rock is said to have crystals, um, sorry about that, if it's said to have crystals, it's a rock that um, you can see through um, either a portion of it or the whole thing. Sometimes you can find bigger crystals. They come in different colors, um, but they're rocks you can see through. So that is considered the crystal rock. Okay, here's one that if you miss on the test, um, you're a real loser. Hardness, um, it's how hard a rock is. It's a pretty tough definition there. So once again, if you miss this, um, that's pretty bad. Um, I actually do put this on the test, so uh, if you miss this, I might have to make fun of you in class in front of everyone. But hardness is how hard a rock is. And that's measured on something called the Mohs scale. And the Mohs scale is just a way that uh, geologists find out how hard a rock is. So, for example, the rock like down here in the corner, this is sandstone, is a very soft rock, so it would have a very low number on the Mohs scale. Um, the rock on the left here, this is diamond, which is one of the hardest minerals or rocks uh, found on Earth. And that's why they're so valuable. Not only do they look good, but they're um, very hard as well. So, um, hardness, simply put, is how hard a rock is. Um, you missed that one, uh, that's not good. So, moving on, last slide here, luster. Luster is basically the, the way light interacts with the surface of a rock. In other words, is the rock shiny or is it dull? As you can see from the two types of rocks, there are actually several types of rocks here, um, but there's definitely rocks that are dull, and that's the one on one, the ones that are below the shiny rock, and there's definitely a rock here in the middle that is shiny. And um, the one that is shiny is said to have luster, or have a lot of luster, but the rocks below them, uh, or below that rock, um, are said to have no luster, or very little luster. 
Um, it's basically how does light react with the surface of the rock. So as you can see, the geologist that took this picture um, to show luster um, had some type of light source to show uh, that this rock is shiny and the other ones in the background are dull. So luster, simply put, is the rock shiny or is it dull? And that's it. Hopefully you've taken all these notes on a Google Doc so you can get all your points. Good luck.